It's Tuesday, February 5. This is the news on PBCJ. I am Simone Absalom. The Bank of Jamaica pumped U.S. $30 million into the foreign exchange market on Friday and announced yesterday that it had injected a further U.S. $30 million into the market in an effort to ensure that disorderly conditions do not exist. At the same time, BOJ Governor Brian Winter said the recent fall in the exchange rate of the Jamaican dollar against its U.S. counterpart is good news for the economy as it shows that it is improving. The selling rate for a U.S. dollar was $137.21 yesterday and $137.06 on Friday compared to a rate of $131.00 one cent on January 21. On Christmas Eve, the rate was $128.44. Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark has denied that there is a shortage of U.S. dollars in Jamaica, stressing that the Bank of Jamaica's reserves are at a historic high. Last week, opposition spokesman on finance, Mark Golding, called for Dr. Clark and the Bank of Jamaica governor to immediately address what he characterized as a shortage, adding that the problem had existed for at least three weeks and caused the rapid depreciation of the Jamaican dollar. Reacting to the statement on TVJ's Smile Jamaica Monday morning, Finance Minister charged that the opposition was taking advantage of a long-held fear among Jamaicans. Such fears are no longer justified, he said, declaring, quote, today our economic fundamentals are entirely different, end quote. The Bank of Jamaica has explained that some large capital transactions affected the U.S. dollar exchange rate. Minister of Justice Deroy Chuck says the construction of a new courthouse for Mandeville, Manchester should begin in the next fiscal year. Addressing the swearing-in ceremony for 35 new justices of the peace for Manchester at the Gulf View Hotel in Mandeville last Friday, the minister said at least six regional court complexes are needed over the next five years. Chuck said that when the Health and Safety Act is implemented in the next few months, the Mandeville Courthouse building could be declared a disaster and could be locked down, and he might have to beg for time to complete the new courthouse. Justices of the peace are being urged not to sign or witness documents for persons that they don't know. This from Justice Minister Delroy Chuck. Make sure that when you witness a photograph, you know the person. And no one say, but I have an ID, sir. This is my ID. You don't even know where that ID come from. But you're going to witness it because they show you an ID. Unless you know the person, or unless you can refer them to another area where a JP may be, for them to go to that JP. But uphold your integrity. Don't sign, don't make, give recommendation for persons you don't know. In fact, you may have heard that the rapist who raped two uh, visitors recently at a uh, an, uh, hotel in Montego Bay was given a recommendation by a justice of the peace who clearly could not have known the man because the man was a rapist in Manchester and this JP is from St. Catherine and based on that recommendation the hotel manager gave the man a, the work and within the next day the man is raping off two tourists so you see the danger, the opening, the criminality, which you could cause if you engage in that sort of inappropriate behavior. Minister Chuck described the practice as being a source of corruption throughout the society. Far too many justices of the peace are bringing the office into disrepute and also fueling irregularities and corruption when they sign documents for persons that they don't know. And that is what, why far too many taxi drivers have three taxi license. Why far too many people have more than one passport. Because you have justice of the peace who have witnessed a name 
that they don't know. So you find these real scumdums, people who don't mean the country and the good. All they want, they want very selfish. They want to get be in discipline on the road as possible. Or they want to create havoc with the passport office. They go to different JPs and the different JPs sign different names for them. And the end result is it facilitates multiple driver's license and multiple passports. It is only now that in the passport office, they are using facial recognition and discovering that there are persons who have more than one passport. You see the problem? Mr. Chuck was speaking recently at a swearing-in ceremony for 35 commissioned justices of the peace for St. Mary at the Emmanuel Baptist Church in Port Maria. The University of the West Indies, Mona, is reporting that a preliminary assessment by members of the Police's Technical Services Division of the scene where a body was discovered on campus Monday morning has indicated that no foul play is suspected. The deceased has been identified as a 69-year-old medical doctor, Judith Rose Spencer, who lived on Great House Boulevard in Mona, St. Andrew. Her body was seen submerged in a pond located in the vicinity of the UE Chapel about 7.45 a.m. The police say the body has since been taken to the morgue where an autopsy will be conducted to determine the cause of death. The UWI, in a statement Monday afternoon, said Rose Spencer was neither a student nor a staff member. The Bank of Jamaica's daily foreign exchange trading summary shows the U.S. dollar on Monday, February 4, ending trading at 137 Jamaican dollars, 21 cents, up by 15 cents. The Canadian dollar ended trading at 104 dollars, 51 cents, up by $104.49, while the British pound sterling ended trading at Jamaican $178.10, up from $177.43. In regional news, Guyana's President David Granger says he will not step down despite a high court ruling that the December 21 no confidence vote is valid. Addressing supporters in West Demerara on a Sunday, President Granger acknowledged that his administration is facing a challenging situation. It was the first time he was rubbing shoulders at a public meeting with his supporters since his diagnosis with non-Hodgkin lymphoma, a form of cancer. To begin, he thanked all for their prayers. If people then believe that prayers could work, I tell you prayers could work. But I'm happy to be here. I wish I had a little more hair. <laughs> but I'm happy to be here. <laughs> in displaying a fighting spirit in the face of a no-confidence vote the High Court has since deemed legally passed, the President appeared prepared for the long haul until the match is determined by the Caribbean Court of Justice. And I have not resigned. And according to the Constitution, I remain president till the next president is sworn in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. My brothers and sisters, that is a split second event. There is no such thing as interim government. There is no such thing as caretaker government. I remain president until the next president is sworn in. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know how they're gonna walk the one out. They're gonna try that. I'm going away. The no-confidence vote determines that new elections be held by March 19th, unless the opposition agrees on an extension. Whenever those elections are held, the president is hoping for another win, and he wasted no time in making the appeal for votes. Give us a chance to finish the job, whatever happens. Put us in the driving seat, and you'll see the transformation, you'll see the change in every community, in every village. 
in every region. The Chief Justice last Thursday ruled that the President and his government cannot remain in office beyond 90 days of the passage of the no-confidence vote. She refused the conservatory order for a stay in the status quo, meaning that elections are now due in 45 days. Trinidad and Tobago government on Monday said it is prepared to assist its fellow Caribbean community. CARICOM countries developed their hydrocarbon sector as it placed much emphasis on the importance of technology in developing its own industry. Prime Minister Dr. Keith Rowley addressing the 2019 Energy Conference and Trade Show hosted by the Energy Chamber of Trinidad and Tobago said the structure of the Caribbean region testifies to the extremely unstable condition of the terrestrial crust of this intercontinental and simultaneously interoceanic area. He said in the recent geological epoch, the Caribbean region is represented by a series of structured elements, the main of which are the Venezuelan and Colombian deep sea sub-oceanic depressions, the Nicaraguan rise, and the greater and lesser Antilles bordering the Caribbean Sea in the north and east. In sports, the Jamaica producers St. Mary's brand has entered into a one-year partnership agreement with the Jamaica Football Federation, the JFF, designed to provide financial and nutrition support for the country's national football teams. Under the agreement that became official at the handing over ceremony at the JFF's headquarters in Kingston recently, JP St. Mary's will provide $500,000 in cash and product support. According to a statement from JP, the sponsorship provides support for the Reggae Girls Senior Team and the Reggae Boys Senior and Junior Team. And that's the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom. Thanks so much for watching.